G'day everyone and welcome to another preview from the North Sydney Bears. This time we're previewing the 1993 North Sydney versus Canterbury game at Belmore Oval. Um, first versus third again uh, for this clash. 19,000 people in attendance on a hot, windy afternoon uh, at Belmore Oval. So um, today we've got a couple of special guests who uh, played in that game. Um, and who've been kind enough to join us and give us some of their insights and, and tell us a little bit about what they thought about that game, if in fact they can remember. Um, but they have been able to see um, a preview, so hopefully it's brought a few things to mind um, for those guys. Uh, firstly, on my left I've got John MacArthur, uh, Spotty, Macca, um, whatever you want to call him, legend of the club. Uh, and on my right I've got David Hall, Hawley, um, among other things. China, a similar legend of the club. Welcome, gents. Thanks for, for joining us today. Thanks, Thanks, mate. Thanks for having us. So, Spotty, we might join with, start with you, John. We won't go into detail of why we call you Spotty, but we'll, we'll call you John or Spotty here today. But um, 1986, you joined the Bears after two seasons at the Magpies. Um, played 133 games, 28 tries, 25 goals, two field goals. Um, for the Bears during your time. Um, in fact, 1993 was a pretty good season for you, Spotty, scoring 12 tries over the course of that season. Um, what are your thoughts or recollections of that, that particular day, or, or in fact, Belmore or Canterbury? Well, Belmore, uh, my recollections of Belmore have always been uh, positive, actually. Every time the Bears played the Bulldogs of Belmore, I found that uh, we really aimed up and yeah, and we did on that particular day as well. It's always a tough game there and, and you look at the, the team lists, um, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, number one, Luke Goodwin, two, Brett Dallas, three, Gary Connolly, four, Darren Smith, five, Jason Williams, there's a number of internationals there straight away, six, Terry Lamb, seven, Craig Polamounta, in the forwards, eight, Martin Bella, nine, Jim Sedaris, 10, Dean Pay, 11, Jason Smith, 12, Robert Ralph, 13, Jim Dimmick, and on the bench, 14, Andrew Patner, Pat Moore, 15, Ben Gillies, and 16, Scott Wilson. So a pretty formidable lineup. And as I said, they were running first um, leading into that match, um, and uh, always a tough game out of Belmore. Oh, absolutely. I remember <coughs> leading into the game, I was uh, marking uh, Gary Conley. So that was a, uh, a real, um, yeah, I really lifted myself for that game because he's a world-class centre at that time. Um, I think him and Steve Renew were the best centres in the world, so it was always good to measure yourself against people like that. Lager, what a man. And David, um, yourself, 153 games, 55 tries, um, 1990 to 97. In fact, both of you played in the reserve grade premiers, premiership win in 1991, having sat on the bench through the, the first grade series, so very rare accolade to win a premiership with the Bears. Um, so, Hawley, thanks for joining us. Uh, anything jump to mind from that day at Belmore? Oh, look, I think as Spotty said, it's always tough at Belmore. Um, always tough against Canterbury. Uh, Canterbury always uh, played right to the death. Uh, always quality, always spirit. Um, and I just remember Belmore, the, the train going past. Um, it was cold. Uh, the dressing rooms weren't the best. Um, but you knew when you got out there, you were in for a game. It was always a great atmosphere, wasn't there? The, yep. the crowd was, was really close there at Belmore, and 19,000 there on that day. Um, you know, they made plenty of noise. We'll have a look at our team, Hawley. Number one, Glenn Lydiard. Two, David Hall. Three, Chris Caruana. Four, John MacArthur. Five, Craig Matepeace. Six, Greg Florimo. Seven, Noel Solomon. Eight, Gavin Jones. Nine, Tony Ray. Ten, Mario Fennick. Eleven, Gary Larson. Twelve, Craig Wilson. Thirteen, Billy Moore. And on the bench, number 14, Adrian Tool, 15, George Bartlett, 16, Les Kiss, and 17, Matt Toshak. Not often you carry a winger on the bench. Um, for this particular game, we've got Les Kiss on the bench. Mm. Well, mate, I'm not, not sure why Peter made that decision, whether uh, Lids may have been a little bit injured that day. I'm not sure. Which um, No pressure on the current wingers, was it? Look, um, I mean, it, there might have been. I, I don't know, but uh, he would have been there. Play if he was, he was playing better than us. <laughs> well, he certainly came on and, and had a, and had an impact. I think Glenn Lydiard didn't um, didn't start the game too well, so there was a positional change. How did that eventuate? Well, after half time, um, poor old Lids got the hook because he wasn't having a good day, and uh, he 
Pete put me back to fullback, uh, put Dave into the centres and brought Les on to the wing. And uh, yeah, and from that point on, we, uh, we started to really lift actually. Yeah, I think we did. I think it changed the, the game a little bit. We waited until Les kissed that, that he had, had such an impact on the game. But, but obviously, you know, Dave and yourself getting in closer to the ball. I know how much you love getting closer to the ball, but, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, there was, a, there was another 5-8 in front of you with the Bears. But, um, but obviously, the creativity having you there, you know, obviously helped the team. But you, you, look, you run down that list, Hawley, you know, a few of those guys you played a lot of footy with. Um, who would you say there is, is you know one of the one of the highlights on that day? Oh look, on that day, mate, I, I thought Chris Carolina was pretty unsung. Um, look, Chris, on his day, he would take the hit ups, he would have the tackles, um, he'd come up with some big plays, um, and he was quite, I suppose, the the, the unsung hero uh, most of the time. He did a lot of hard work. Um, Gav, um, before we came in, Gav, he just knew how to run the ball. I would have hated that to tackle Gav. Uh, on his day, Gav was, I think, one of the most destructive runners. Oh, most yeah. definitely, yeah. Big and powerful, low centre of gravity, yeah. And the, the other thing when I was watching the play over is that some of them brought back a memory that Mario would always say, give it to him, give it to him, give it to him. <laughs> yeah. And it rang out in that play and it just reminded me so much that every time we take, take the defensive line up, he'd say, give it to him. <laughs> so there's something for you to, to watch the game tomorrow, is see if you can pick up Mario yelling out, give it to him, because it's quite clear uh, on the audio. And, he, and I don't know what it did for anybody around him, but I think it fired him up anyway. <laughs> Looking at it, you'll see him with his hands on his hips with his ass sticking out, saying, give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Getting someone else to do it. <laughs> Getting someone else to do it, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, look, Mario, um, we might as well jump onto him straight away, Hawley. He, he joined the club a couple of years earlier and, and had a, a, an immediate impact um, on the club. But for me, there was a little bit of um, banter between you and Mario, which just went on at training, it went on in the dressing rooms, it went on every single time you were together. And it was priceless to see you guys go at it. Was there something personal there? Holy, or was it just good fun? I think it was just good fun, Flo. In mean, 91, when, when he came to the club as, as, as a senior player, an experienced player, is that I, I was young and inexperienced. Um, and I honestly believe that, that Mario's professionalism shone through a little bit with myself uh, in how you prepared yourself. But, but also he brought the, the, the jovial banner to, to the team. Absolutely. Um, which, yeah. which I think, uh, again, you could have sat back and taken it, which really wouldn't have sat well with the rest of the guys. So by stepping up and giving a bit of that banter back, it sort of earned that respect of that younger player in talking back to that senior player. But at times, you, you had to know your place as well. Is that there are times that you didn't want to overstep the mark, uh, but there's times where you had to stand up for yourself and, and give as good back as what you got. It's yeah. funny you so say, like, with all that banter that went on, I remember going home from training <coughs> on a Tuesday, Thursday night, and my stomach would be that sore, and it definitely wasn't from doing push-ups. It was yeah. from it was from yeah. giggling and laughing. Yeah. It was just the best time, and I think that's why we played so well because we were having a good time as well. And I think you've got to have that. You know, we we're a bit re relaxed at training and and having a good time, and it shone through on game days. I thought. I think Mario, you, you could tell it was coming. He had a series of one-liners, and he and he went to them all the time. And you could hear the conversation, you thought, oh no, here it comes, here it comes. And as soon as someone mentioned about, oh, you owe me $5 or you owe me you know, <laughs> a beer or something, you go, what was it? Oh, you're like the London fog, you won't settle. <laughs> you know, you could see it coming and he used it time and time again. And, you know, and we laughed every time as well. It was funny. Personality pill. Yeah. Well, he's all of a sudden taking a personality <laughs> yeah. pill when he'd come back with something. I didn't realise you had a personality. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but he had a good day, game that day, Mario, on the time, you know, the times that he was on the field. And, um, and he was, as you say, he, he did have a, a, an ability to knit everyone together. And you wanted not only to play for your team, but you wanted to play for Mario on that day and yeah. make him happy. So. Very tough man. He was a very tough man. So um, on that particular day, it was a windy day. You know, it wasn't a great start, some poor handling. Um, but it, again, it was physical. It, it went Canterbury's way to start without giving it away. It came back to our way a little bit, but if you look across the two team lists, um, Johnny, I'll go to you. There's lots of Gat Queenslanders in our team, and there was a there was a lot of Queenslanders at our club over the years. And in, in, in this particular game, you've got four Queenslanders in the um, in the pack. You've got 
um, Les Kiss on the bench, and you've got a couple of Queenslanders in the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs team. So, who's your favourite Queenslander, Spotty? Well, favourite Queenslander, that's a hard question, and uh, I'll probably um, I'll answer it this way. Not my favourite Queenslander, but the nicest Queenslander would have to be Gary Iverson. Hands down. He is just an absolute champion bloke, never says a bad word about anybody, and has always got a smile on his face. And in this particular game, if he wasn't on the field, we would have been in all sorts of trouble because, God, he could tackle. Yeah, I think we, we made, like, double the tackles in the first half. Yeah, I reckon Larry right. would have made, you know, half of them. Yeah. 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 What a player. Yeah. 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 Oh, look, the, you, what a player, what a man. So many good Queenslanders. So many good Queenslanders. And, I, I, and I've noted a few, not only those few in that game... Maybe I've missed a couple over the time that I played with. Maybe the fans can tell me if I've missed a couple. But if we roll through them, we've gone um, Gavin Jones, Tony Ray, Gary Larson, Billy Moore, Les Kiss. And on the other side, we had Martin Bella, who was a bear there at one point. And then I've got guys like um, Ben Eichen, Brett Dallas, Kelly Egan, Brett French, Ian French, Tony Hearn, Peter Jackson... Gary Smith, Terry Butler, Jeff, Jeff Doyle. Have I missed anyone out? That's a bit old, I think. But they're all good players too, all great That's players. A yeah. and it was always tough at uh, around State of Origin time to watch the State of Origin when these guys would be playing for Queensland and they're the guys you're with you know, all the time. You know, nearly every second day you're with these guys, train with them. And, and then playing New South Wales and we... We had you in the New South Wales side, but the majority of times we had Queenslanders. So mm. we were sitting at home thinking, well, well, who am I going for here? You know, it was always really a, t a tough decision. Yeah. But uh, I still went for the Blues. It's funny, though, how many Bears fans are Queenslanders fans. I was speaking to a few Bears fans out there, and they do follow Queensland simply because they had so, so many, many yeah. Queensland players yeah, yeah. in that team. And they're all good blokes. All they're all good blokes, blokes, aren't they? They're all good blokes. All good blokes. Yeah, no doubt about it. So this game evolves and there comes a point towards the very end of the match where the game could go either way and it comes down this clutch play on whether a penalty is awarded and if a penalty is awarded, the game could change. Now, there was an infringement at this penalty scene and David, you were on the receiving end of this infringement. Now... Did you at that particular time realise, well, if we get a penalty here, we could actually win the game? And if you did have that mindset, obviously you did a very good job in persuading <laughs> the referee that it was a penalty. Or in fact, you know, were you injured? Because what I saw was a guy on the ground who was in dire need of attention. He was put into the, um, the rest position. We had the referee bending over you. At one point, we zoomed in, your eyes were glazed over, you were staring into space. I was really concerned for your welfare. How were you on that day? Yeah, I was out, mate. I really didn't know what was going on. Right. So, so that penalty scenario was something just I wasn't even thinking about. But, uh, yeah, it was a, a case where uh, I, I'd scored the try and uh, Craig Palmata, for whatever reason, decided to uh, take out his frustrations on, uh, on me lying on the ground. Um, and yeah, from footage that I've seen, mate, it was uh, everyone was very, very concerned about uh, about my welfare. Even uh, Billy Harrigan. Billy Harrigan yeah, was very happy to look. And you know, he, he awarded the penalty, so it must have been fair because of all the referees out there, I thought Billy was one of the best. Well, I think, though, in, in hindsight, we're quite lucky because uh, best or best looking. Well, if you ask him, he had the, the flick. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, in saying that, it's, it's in hindsight, it's lucky that, that it did happen because poor old Craig Makepeace, he's rowdy. Mm. Um, he, he couldn't buy a goal all day, poor bugger. Couldn't kick a goal. Very windy conditions. I think Luke Goodwin had the same problems in the Canterbury team as well. Um, so not a good day for a goal kicker. Thankfully, you didn't have to use those left footers, mate, on the day. Yeah. Legs. So I've got very skinny legs. So no power on those legs. And they were leather balls, so... <laughs> There was no chance. Plenty of accuracy. <laughs> Plenty of accuracy. <laughs> and that's a good point, the leather ball. I mean, 1993 to 2019 or 20, the game has changed and evolved over, over time. I'd be interested in your thoughts on, on how you see the game, how it's changed, any particular things you like or don't like about um, today's game. Obviously, the wrestling's a big issue in our game at the moment. Um, I really can't stand it. Uh, there was more one-on-one -on -one tackles in, in it back in our day, and uh, I thought that... 
uh, led to more flow in the game. I think there's a lot more flow, and um, pardon the pun there, flow. And um, yeah, I, that's one of that's one of the areas. I mm, think yeah, mm. definitely that, yeah. that wrestle. Yeah, yeah. Even the, like you mentioned before, the the ability at the right to play the ball to have a contest where the marker could ra rake the ball yeah. back. I mean, that's just a little one, but I didn't see any problems with that one. You know, it was, it was a good opportunity to get them. The yeah, guys are good back, at yeah. it. Like Mario was very good at it. And I think one happened in that game as well. Yeah. Um, what about yourself, Holly? The, the wingers have changed shape a little bit. Oh, look, mate, back in our day, I think Wendell was possibly the biggest winger that, that I would have played against uh, in, in sheer size. Um, no one Andrew Drew, Kenny Nagus, but yeah, every week, if I was playing now, I'd be coming up against and I suppose that the, the, the other thing for me was that in my size is that as players got tired getting at a dummy half scooting is that you're able to find that person who possibly was having a blow um, whereas now with the interchange is that that person who might have fatigued they're typically not, not there now that's right. so there's a fresh person there that's going to going to grab you so I think, if anything, maybe reviewing the interchange a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to bring more of that fatigue back in the game and sort of bring it more universal for all sizes, mm. where in the back end of those games, as we know, in second half or first half, is that all of a sudden those smaller, nippier blokes... And that's where the excitement comes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Lots of excitement. You know, everyone, people want to see that. They want to see those blokes ducking and darting and you know, getting through the line and mm -hmm. into the backfield. I must admit I did enjoy the interchange, particularly the unlimited interchange. <laughs> and I remember one game where I was on and off twice in the first half, just because the coach said, look, when you want to come off, put your hand up and you're off. So I said, okay, it's hot, I'm <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, get out of here. <laughs> um, so just a couple of other things I'd ask you to have a look at during this game. It's funny the fashion trends that occur in the game over the year and years and the torpedo pants were fashionable there for a while, which were uh, a guard to protect your, your, your thighs. And there were a couple of torpedo pants out there on the day. There was also one individual out there, only one, wearing a moustache on the day, David Hall. What happened to the moustache, Wally? Well, mate, for all the years, Karen had told me that it was no good, it looked dreadful, and I wouldn't believe her. And in 1994, the next year, I realised that it was dreadful, and it's never <laughs> been seen again. <laughs> <laughs> <Go> <laughs> Beautiful. And we had wings with shoulder pads on the game too, I noticed. And a couple of good mullets out there. As a, a matter of mullets, fact, yeah. John, I think you were verging from the mullet to the non-mullet. You are in yeah, that mid-wave phase, yeah, yeah. yeah, mid, mid, mid phase. Yeah. Getting a bit old, becoming a veteran. Just and, yeah. still a curl or two back there, yeah, but not, right. not the same application as before. Uh, fashion. <laughs> Rugby league fashion. It's a gem, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, well, that's awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today to talk about this, um, this game. I also would like to say thank you to Stonemasons and Landscapers for sponsoring this segment and sponsoring the Bears. Been fantastic partners, Joe Musa, for all the work that you do for the club. And of course, Norse, who are all, also our, our, our main partner and support everything that we do. So thanks very much. See you at the game tomorrow.